The world is currently in the midst of a pandemic and in the 1840s it faced another one. Cholera would go on to claim the lives of over 10,000 people in London alone. Now, there were several outbreaks before and after this one and some parts of the world are still dealing with a cholera pandemic. However, what's interesting about this outbreak and the impact it had on London in the 1840s and 50s has everything to do with how it was researched and what happened after. You might be wondering what any of this has to do with civil engineering, but bear with me and we'll get there. It all starts with one man, John Snow, and no, not the one from Game of Thrones and no, not the one from the news. This John Snow was from York and when he was 14, he began a medical apprenticeship in Newcastle. It was during this time he began working with cholera patients. After he finished his medical degree, he opened up a practice in Soho. Now, Soho of the 1840s and Soho of today were very different. Think less theatres, expensive bars and restaurants and more cramped housing, workhouses and a brewery. At the time, it was thought that cholera was spread through bad air, but John Snow didn't really buy into this. From his work with cholera patients, he thought that if this was the case, he should have contracted it too. He did several investigations where he would collect data about the flow of foul water, the location of the pumps, the water suppliers, and the quality of the water itself. His most famous investigation, though, involved him tracking an outbreak of cholera in 1854 to one pump in Broad Street. As a result of his research, the handle was removed and the cholera outbreak subsided proving that cholera was a water and not airborne disease. Okay, now the story is a little bit more complicated and political than that, but what is important is how it fed into the sanitary movement. At the time in London, it was common to open your door and see human waste just flowing through the street. In fact, it got so bad that the summer of 1858 is known as the Great Stink. It was in this climate that Joseph Bazalgette enters the story. Now, Joseph Bazalgette was a civil engineer who ended up leading the project to construct a sewage system under London, a system we still use today. The work of both Snow and Bazalgette were vital in improving the sanitation condition for Londoners at the time. Sanitation is second only to antibiotics in terms of numbers of lives saved. Now, I tell this story to highlight the use of data within civil engineering. Data is crucial to what we as civil engineers do, from deciding where to locate infrastructure assets, to identifying what areas in need of development, to choosing what materials to use on a project. We have more tools available to us in the 21st century than John Snow did. Technology, data science and analytics tools um, and principles are being applied to allow us to better utilise the data we already have available. In the future, we may have truly smart infrastructure, we will better understand and predict the needs of our users, and we'll see patterns and trends we don't currently know exist. It is important to note, however, that data is not truth. Data can be incorrectly entered, it can be biased, it can be wrong, but it is still a good tool to use to allow us to inform engineering decisions. It allows us to use the past to better build the future. Thank you.